All right, let's talk a little bit about automated uh, irrigation. Thought I would throw together a quick video, <clears throat> excuse me, collecting some of my findings, experiments the last couple of weeks, maybe save people uh, a little time here. What we're trying to do is automate a uh, irrigation or a sprinkler system. Uh, like most people, I assume, my system, and this is irrigating trees, which uh, uh, is will be important a little bit later, but you're running standard 24-volt um, uh, irrigation valves, sprinkler valves, like most systems here. What I want to be able to do is to control that system uh, remotely via the internet uh, through uh, an uh, ethernet-based controller, uh, be able to manually turn things off and on, as well as uh, schedule stuff remotely. And I explored three different options. There may be other ones out there, but I explored the um, irrigation caddy uh, made by a firm out of Texas, Austin, I think. Uh, the Etherane or Etherane uh, controller made by QuickSmart. And what I ended up going with here, uh, these are Z-Wave controllers um, compatible with my Z-Wave system. I tried all three, and I think, uh, let me just give you some quick impressions. You can go to the QuickSmart uh, website about the uh, Etherane system. There are all sorts of posts on that. I think Irrigation Caddy is a, uh, a little newer. It's got some reviews on Amazon. Got a real helpful website there. For me, neither of those uh, made sense. Money-wise, they all ended up being a uh, ballpark about the same. Um, for controlling what I have, nine zones here, probably going to add a couple more. Um, these, well, let me start with the other two. Uh, the Quick Smart Etherane, um, the main drawback I saw with that, kind of a clunky interface, although it interfaces with uh, different softwares. It's not its own kind of system, so uh, it plugs into a variety of software platforms out there. And LawnCheck.com has um, yeah, a pretty decent interface you can use. But biggest problem I saw was that uh, the lag time. Uh, apparently, there uh, is a setting you can use as far as testing valves is concerned, but for a reason I can't understand, once you set up the system and if you want to just quickly turn on a zone for testing or whatever, there's a four to five minute lag between the time you enter the command and when the valve actually gets turned on. And that was really frustrating for me. Uh, I'm uh, monitoring this remotely as well as my energy use and you were never sure whether the command was sent until a little bit later. It just, um, that, that was a deal breaker for me. Although otherwise, it had some really nice aspects to the system, particularly that you could put in uh, an unlimited, well, reasonably unlimited number of irrigation programs. And that was the main weakness to the irrigation caddy uh, controller. You could only put in three programs and then a run now program that I guess amounted to basically a fourth. Now if you were using this for standard lawn irrigation, um, which really is the target market for both of these first products, so I really can't blame them. What I'm wanting to do is a little different, where you are frequently irrigating um, things for short periods of time, a couple of programs might cut it, but in my case, I've got trees and shrub zones. Uh, the conventional wisdom is to irrigate less frequently, but for longer periods of time. So you combine that with the fact that you'd like to water uh, at night generally, and the limitations of three or maybe four zones becomes pretty apparent when you're talking about nine or ten, let alone more, uh, zones of trees there. So that was the deal breaker for me with the irrigation cat. Other limitation with the irrigation caddy, it doesn't have its own yet. I suspect they will develop it. Uh, Android or iPhone uh, app for controlling. You can obviously um, go to the website and control it that way just through a phone based browser, um, which, as I understand it, I didn't get to the point of uh, exploring that. Uh, works fairly well, but you have to right now, the only uh, phone-based app option is through a third party. You get a free year of their you know, remote VRZ service, and then after that, uh, I think it's like 20 30 uh, bucks a year to pay for it. 
which uh, didn't seem right to me. Uh, so, but most critically was the limitation of number of programs with the QuickSmart. So that led me to thinking about uh, alternatives with uh, the Z-Wave system. I have just put in a Z-Wave system. I was coming from the X10 world uh, to kind of get me started with home automation. X10 is certainly cheaper, uh, fun, but eventually I ran into problems with reliability and specifically some conflicts uh, between two other things I've been getting involved with. Well, one other thing, alternative energy and uh, one of the solar aspects, components of the solar system I was using, uh, in-phase microinverters, they communicate uh, via the power line just like uh, the X10 system does as well as the TED 5000 system which uh, the energy detective, kind of a cheesy name but a, a pretty decent system for monitoring home energy use. So uh, I had all sorts of conflicts and there was no way X10 was going to survive that cut and since I already had some reliability issues with that um, I decided to boot it and to move over to Z-Wave and I was able to work out the conflict between the other two. So I'm already into Z-Wave and I'm thinking okay uh, what can I do in terms of irrigation control? Well, what I found out, this is kind of slick and what we've been looking at, not exactly the most exciting video I know, these are individual uh, Z-Wave controllers. Um, these are outdoor modules. I used them just because they were the cheapest uh, I could find. I got some for 15 bucks a piece and then the price went up to 20 So you, 9 or 10 of these going to run you about 200 bucks. Uh, which was ballpark what the irrigation caddy and the others uh, were. And what I basically, or what I'm basically doing, is each of these controls an individual zone. And so uh, when we take a look at the uh, uh, Vera system, which is the system that controls the Z-Wave, each of these controls an individual zone, which is to say each of these controls an individual 24, uh, valve, or 24 volt valve. And the neat thing I found out about these is that even though these are designed, uh, and I guess this is where we get to the, um, you know, do this at your own risk, I certainly haven't seen any issues with this, is that these controllers, even though they're designed to be operated uh, with, you know, standard uh, house voltage uh, 115, 120, they also work with 24 volts. So basically what I've done is I am just running 24 volts through here. They still work, uh, from what I can tell, uh, indistinguishably as if they were running on the house current. And I click them on and off and they end up being 24 volt switches that obviously turn on and off the 24 volt valves. And uh, what I ended up doing here is just to make the wiring a little easier. I know this looks like a uh, total uh, sort of redneck wiring job here. I used some bus bars here to simplify the wiring. Here is the um, output of just a standard 24 volt transformer. I think mine's about 800 milliamps, something like that. Um, the uh, two sides of that going to each of the bus bars and then each of those going to, uh, I just use some standard, um, you know, uh, extension cords I cut apart with this level of voltage and amperage. We're not exactly talking about uh, a lot of juice going through there. And then each of those plugs into an individual uh, Z-Wave controller. And then in the bottom here, eh, you can't see it real well, is the other half of the extension cord, the, uh, the male plug receptacle side. And each of those are wired into the uh, leads for your irrigation system. This is just standard irrigation wire, 18 gauge. I ran that out to my uh, tree lines. Um, and what were, I had some long runs. Uh, one of them went, uh, God, I'm trying to think, probably seven, 800 feet. Um, so you do spend a lot in cabling, but that's going to be true whatever system you use. Um, but for the common wire, I used 14 gauge solid. And then I just ran uh, the standard irrigation uh, sprinkler cable and get in any home improvement store, the 18 gauge stuff, and uh, that wired to each of the valves. And then that comes back in here. And so here is the white, there we go, the common tying into the bus bar here. And so I've got one conductor from each of these tying into the common. And then, of course, um, the other um, side of each of these controllers 
um, going to the individual um, valve cable. Okay, I'm going to cut this off here because of the time limit and uh, pick up with a few more details with part two.